Hey guys, Ava here and today I have a big reason to be excited because today I am starting a pretty incredible journey. See, I've partnered up with Sky Team who are sending me to three different countries on their amazing round the world ticket. It's basically a ticket that allows you to book a trip to several different countries with so much flexibility and without breaking the bank. So, are you ready? I think I'm ready. Let's go. My first destination is a destination that I've been dreaming about seeing for a little while. But I'm not going to tell you about it until, well, five, four, three, two, one, let's go. Welcome to Armenia. The first destination on my journey is also probably the wildest. In this little known gem of the Caucasus, tucked in between Europe and Asia, nature reigns supreme. I was on my way to visit a family who lives in these mountains, but the way to get there was not exactly smooth. That's crazy! <laughs> Apart from livestock traffic jams along the road, the route led me through mountains and dirt tracks. See, the village of Gomk lies nestled in between the valleys and hills of Western Armenia. All right, it looks like we've just arrived. I'm about to meet with a family who runs a local guest house here, and I want to ask them some questions about what it's like to live here in this remote part of the world. <music> Right, I think this is it. Let's go inside. Uh, it looks like this family lives in just the most idyllic place I've seen. Look at all this green. I think to many of us, this is like a little slice of paradise. But to Mary and her son Ben, who live here, this is home. The family runs an agro-tourism business here, bringing travelers from all around the world to this remote corner of Armenia. In this place that feels like it's outside of time, I wanted to ask Mary about this countryside lifestyle. What is the thing that makes you happiest about living here? What makes me Mary told me that what makes her the happiest is living here and running her guest house here. She explained that by welcoming travelers to her home, she gives them happiness and enjoyment. And that's what makes her happy in turn. I had to ask a cheeky question too. I wondered whether Mary had a favorite nationality in terms of the tourists that visit her. Yes, uh, and that is just such a beautiful sentiment. In a place like this anyway, all nationalities can be equal under Mary's watchful eye. Eventually, Mary put me to a good use getting to work. <laughs> in this village, all food comes straight from the garden or the animals that roam around freely. This is the most organic it gets. Now this is real honey. <laughs> and I think we're ready. This whole visit felt just like visiting family. Mary claimed that nature is the best medicine and in her home and through her food, she could probably make anyone feel happy and right at home. But the time has come to say goodbye to beautiful Armenia and today I'm going to be flying kind of around the globe. I was about to jump from the serenity of the Caucasus into an entirely different landscape and culture because my next stop was Mexico. And more specifically, I came to Mexico City. This capital doesn't have the best reputation among travelers, but I came here searching for a different side to the story. The next stage of my journey has brought me right here to Mexico City, the capital of color and energy and creativity. This seems like just the right kind of place to ask some people about creativity, what they think about it and how that combines with how they live their lives. I had come to one of the many street markets in Mexico City, 
This one was steaming with artists from across all disciplines. Everyone here was expressing themselves in their own individual way. On my stroll through the market, I ran into Adriana, an independent artist whose work caught my eye right away. It's very important for me to este, create these images, images that talk about the pareja, the love, the infancia. I also wanted to ask Adriana, as an artist, what would be her advice to aspiring creatives? Dejemos de, de pensar que no es posible mostrar nuestro trabajo, que no es posible este, llevarlo hacia las, este, hacia las personas. No dejar nunca, decía por ahí, leí una frase que dijo alguna vez Picasso, ¿no? que las musas me encuentren trabajando. O sea, nosotros seguir en el proceso creativo trabajando. Este, creando imágenes, no desistir de pensar que, de creer en uno mismo también, en cre tener confianza en nosotros mismos para que nuestro trabajo también este, se proyecte con esa confianza y las personas este, que se vea tibio tu trabajo, tiene que ser con todo, como si fuera el último linoleo que tuvieras, como si no tuvieras más material para trabajar. Adriana's words really hit home in art and in every walk of life. It's all about getting started and putting yourself out there, no matter how scary it feels at first. There's something just so beautiful and innocent, but at the same time haunting about her art. I couldn't pass up on the opportunity to get one piece for myself. And you know, this is something that you remember people by. You take a little piece of them, a little piece of their passion. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I think much of what Adriana was saying was about being brave, just going for it, no matter our own inhibitions. That's the lesson I took from her, but also from all of Mexico City. See, this vibrant metropolis is not without its problems, but what I saw out on the streets was a spirit of energy and love. People with the courage to dance like there's no tomorrow, play music with passion, and simply enjoy life to the fullest. Believe it or not, I think it takes a lot of courage to do that. And that's why leaving that uplifting vibrancy of Mexico was no easy task. You know, sometimes it can be really difficult to leave places that you are just really fond of. So that's what leaving Mexico feels like to me. But but the SkyTeam Round the World ticket I was traveling on was taking me to a very different part of the world. By the way, I decided to try out this ticket because of the flexibility that it gave me in terms of my schedule and destination itinerary. You can read about it in my caption below. And in the meantime, the last stop on my round the world journey has brought me to South Korea. In this country known for its fast pace of technological progress, I decided to travel to the lesser known city of Busan. My goal for this visit was to learn something about Korean food culture. So I met up with a local foodie to show me around and give me a lesson in Korean cooking. I'm here in Busan with Junho. Oh, hello, nice to meet you. This is Junho. I am foodie in Busan. See, Busan is Korea's largest port city and the market that Junho brought me to, called Jagalchi, is the country's biggest seafood marketplace. Fishermen bring their catch of the day to Jagalchi every morning which means that anything you buy here is bound to be super fresh and local. Junho taught me about all the different kinds of seafood that's local to the region, and in turn, I couldn't take my eyes off all the people working away in this crazy hustle and bustle. After a couple of hours of exploring the market culture here in Busan, we finally made it to our final destination. We've just come here to a cooking studio and we're going to be doing a little Korean cooking lesson. I'll be doing my best and learning from the master himself. Hello. <laughs> Jun Ho's mission for today was to teach me how to cook a few dishes Korean style. His passion for food was infectious, even to someone like me, who normally shies away from any kind of cooking. The smell is just unbelievable. Yes. Wow, soy, garlic, mushroom. And then Jun Ho tried to teach me how to flip a pancake. One, two, three. Okay, good. One, two, three. Okay. Good. That's a more faster. Let's take another look at that, shall we? 
Don't worry, don't worry. And eventually, our feast was ready. Every single dish we made had come from Junho's family recipe book. But for me, the most interesting part began when Junho told me more about the food etiquette in Korean families, just like his own. When we have a meal in Korea, we say, 잘 먹겠습니다. 잘 먹겠습니다. 잘 먹겠습니다. Yes, yeah, okay. 잘 먹겠습니다. Yes, 잘 먹겠습니다. <laughs> okay. When we have some meal, you cannot like this way. Oh. You just put it in here. And then eat the rice. If you have some meal with your father, mother, mother, or grandmother together, mm -hmm. you say, 잘 먹겠습니다. And then my grandmother. Oh. It first. You also try my father, mother, and me, and my sister. Okay. And that's really just Korean tradition. Yes. That's the the most senior person. Yes, 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 yes. Senior person is the first time. It was time to say goodbye to Jan Ho, who taught me a great deal about the role that food plays in Korean family life. It was also time to say goodbye to Korea, and goodbye to my round the world journey. <sighs> Guys, that was an absolutely incredible and, and pretty life-changing journey. I feel like I have learned so much traveling from one corner of the globe to the other. And you know they say that you learn so much by traveling, but I think that you learn so much more from the people that you meet on your travels. And even though people like Mary, Adriana and Junho taught me so much of their own culture, I feel like the biggest insight for me has been that you can really learn from anyone and everyone. Anyone can be your teacher as long as you are willing to open yourself up to their insight, their experience and what they can share with you, what they can teach you. And that's why I, for me the best part of travel is meeting people. Thank you guys so much for coming along on this incredible round the world journey with me and a big shout out to Sky Team for making this happen. Thank you again, and I hope to see you in the next vlog.